You're watching Guy Gatineau. There are a number of interpretive programs that the Gatineau Park puts on. One of these that I attended in the fall was called Follies of the Fall Forest. For several weekends during the most colorful season, people are invited to find out more about the park's trees. Geneviève Pilon talked to children and adults, first inside the visitor center, and then guided us through the Sugarbush Trail, identifying various species of trees and talking about their adaptations for their various ecological niches. Geneviève first explained that much of the color in the fall leaves is actually there all the time, but masked by the green color of chlorophyll. That's the stuff that enables the leaves to create sugar out of sunshine. Here she is showing some of the kids how colors are hidden using food coloring and water. One of the reasons that trees like maples shed their leaves in the fall is that leaves depend on water to be able to do their jobs. In winter, water is ice. Leaves are useless to the trees, and so the trees get ready to shuck the leaves by growing a thin, corky layer at the base of each stem. Now, once the tree begins to cut off circulation to the leaves, the chlorophyll gets used up, and the yellow and orange begins to show through. The yellow and orange is from another kind of chemical called carotenoids, and that shows up all over nature, making flamingos pink, lobsters red, and carrots orange. The chemical got its name through Latin, from the same source that gave carrots their name. The red leaves of Gatineau Hills get their color in a different way, and it's this color that makes some years flamingly gorgeous, and others just bright and beautiful. Especially in maple trees, as the tree begins to shut down, some sugars are left in the leaves. And when nights are cool and days are sunny, these sugars undergo another chemical reaction, turning them into something called anthocyanin, another chemical named for what it colors, this time from Greek meaning flower blue. It's looking up at a cold night sky and then getting most of the sunshine that makes the top of maple trees seem the most red sometimes. I've heard several authorities say that the fall colors start based on the tree's perception of shorter daylight hours. And Geneviève said that too. But it seems to me that in years when warm weather stretches deep into the fall, the colors come later. Now, I don't know if this is my memory playing tricks on me, but it's nice to know that there is a scientific reason why some years the fall foliage seems more beautiful than others. Want more? GuideGatno.com